This is the story of how I transformed this 1930s Maine Forest Service cabin in the summer of 2021. It started in the spring of 2018 when I paddled the Upper St. John River for the first time. After resigning from the military, I was setting up my guide service and I formed a YouTube channel as a way of marketing my services. So as I paddled the river solo with my dog Gracie, I filmed the adventure as a way to demonstrate the type of trip I could offer as a guide. The water was low so there were many obstacles to negotiate as I made my way down the river. Gracie's always doing her best to help out in every way that she can. The river is full of invasive muskie. From my experience on this trip, they are pretty easy to catch. I mostly just fished for them when I spotted one. So as I paddled the river, I stopped at each and every campsite and I discovered a series of old log cabins along the way. After completing the trip, I contacted the North Main Woods, inquiring about what they intended to do with these cabins, as they were all in disrepair and in need of maintenance. They informed me that they'd been looking for someone to come in and do the necessary repairs and renovations to maintain these cabins for public use. Of all the cabins, this one here at Ledge Rapids was in the worst shape. It is too far gone and totally needs to be rebuilt, so we tried to come up with a plan to do that. We faced continual opposition, stifling this project from happening. So after three years of trying to get approval to make this rebuild happen, we decided to move on to the other cabins, which instead of being totally rebuilt, they needed to be restored. And that's what led me to Flossbogen. This old road leads to the river about three miles downstream from the cabin. This is where I had the canoe stashed. It's an old town, 20 foot Tripper XL made of Royal X. I used it to haul in all the materials to the cabin as there was no road access. I didn't paddle it though. I used a seven and a half horsepower Evinrude two stroke outboard. With the side mount for this motor, I always put it at an angle so that I could compensate for the lean of the canoe and so that I could tilt it up when I came into shallow water and gravel bars. This motor always ran great and I could make it up the river to the cabin in about 30 to 45 minutes depending on how much gear I had loaded in the canoe. If I held the throttle wide open, that canoe was screaming up the river. It was always a fun ride. It's a good way to get to work. Gracie enjoys it too. Coming into the bogan here where the cabin sits, this cabin and some of the others were part of the main forest service and they were used as ranger stations where they'd maintain communication wire that was run along the river. I had to climb up this bank to get to the cabin with the water level being low and I had a bunch of material inside the cabin. It's all disorganized at this point. Lugging everything up that bank. It's always a chore. Gracie is exhausted. Here's a bunch of strapping for the roof. I had stored inside the cabin to keep it dry. I did use a gas generator at the beginning for my power needs. This is the trail to the nearest road. It's about three quarters of a mile and it kind of disappears in these jack firs and spruce. I ended up clearing it out later. This little brook still has some brook trout in it, which are native. In front of the cabin here in the Bogan there, musky. It's a beautiful place. The floor was bowed because the entire perimeter of the cabin had sunken in while the center post hadn't. It 
it was a process of jacking the cabin up, temporarily supporting it with logs that I would cut the chainsaw and getting it all leveled until I could set it on the permanent foundation which was these pressure treated 12 by 12 pads and 6 by 6 pressure treated posts. Now I got the floor all leveled up, took a lot of coffee and tea. There was a lot of junk and debris underneath this cabin that had accumulated over the years. But I removed all of that. This part of the sill that was in contact with the ground where the foundation had settled was rotten and I had to replace that. I found some old lumber underneath the cabin that was still dry and I ended up using it later on for the front porch. Where I took the sill out I had to support each individual floor joist as it had been attached to that rotten sill. As rotten as it was it didn't want to let go. But I finally got it. It's time for Gracie to cool off. She's not a big stick chaser but I was able to entice her to get in and get wet. These two trees had been leaning and every time the wind hit them they were creaking. I didn't knew they were going to come down. I didn't want them to come down when I or someone else was underneath them so I just took them down and used them for lumber and firewood. It's a gorgeous evening. The sunsets here are amazing. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Am I your first customer? Yes, you are. Nice. Going back down to work in the cabin.
Here comes Jake and Lisa. They came to visit, and the next day, Tyler showed up. It was nice to have the company, and it was even better to have the help. Tyler brought in a load of materials. There's Tyler's little dog, Cass. She's about 11 years old at the time of this. There's the young Avery. He was enjoying his time out there. We're working on strapping the roof so we can put down the metal roofing. Avery was pretty interested in what we had going on. Lisa was taking care of their youngest one, Dylan, at the time. She's quite a character. We had to remove a section of the old roof where the eave was rotten and then we had to make false rafters so that the metal roof would extend over the eave of the roof for adequate coverage. The views and the scenery at golden hour and the sunsets is just amazing here. We ran out of materials and Tyler was able to use his chainsaw mill to mill us up some lumber from that tree that I cut down. So that worked out well. I don't know what we would have done without the help and supervision of our dogs. After removing this old pulley wheel, I put an old moose antler under the gable end, which I think is a classic look for an old log cabin in the Maine woods. You can see we got the metal roof on, I built the small front porch, replaced that rotten sill, cleaned up the whole campsite, and organized the inside of the cabin, and cut, split, and stacked a small supply of firewood for the next visitor. After getting to this point, I moved on to the cabin at Nine Mile, which took me the rest of the summer. I did return to this cabin in the fall to see how it stood and to spend the night here.
I returned to this cabin in the summer of 2022 to complete the finishing touches which included staining the window trim and the porch and shaking the outside of the cabin. If you'd like to see those videos as well as the video series from the Nine Mile Cabin Project, the links to those playlists will be in this video description. And if you'd like to see more content like this, let me know in the comments and stay tuned for more.